It was once the greatest record store between Portland and San Francisco. And now, it's a f***ing IHOP. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, you'll notice uh, I am in a different setting. I've decided to experiment with a new setup. I've got my uh, tablet here, which is uh, my uh, Album Diaries video that I did last summer with Noah. Uh, I recorded that on my tablet, so I thought I would give that a try. And I'm sitting you know, in my easy chair with my records behind me, my, my record cabinet there. Uh, so I thought, you know, something resembling a music-ish background as opposed to, uh, you know, sitting in front of my computer with my webcam. There's just kind of a, just the stuff that happened to be back there. Uh, is the background that I ended up with, but I've been missing the usual uh, uh, music background that I used to do my videos in. So I thought I would do this. I've got one of my uh, two camera lights that I usually use uh, with my computer uh, is sitting here beside, behind this, so I think the lighting is really good. Uh, it, it's not too harsh. It doesn't look too harsh in the uh, viewfinder there. So anyway, yes, a, a new setup. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, I, I am definitely more comfortable in this chair than I am in my desk chair at my computer. So, or than I was on the stool in my old uh, my old setup. So, we'll see how this goes. Give me some feedback in the comments. What do you think of this new background? I've got this cool uh, 50th anniversary of music poster back here. In fact, let me adjust the angle right here so you can see a little, little bit better. Uh, but yes, and uh, by the way, don't expect uh, the funny cold open in my videos regularly. Uh, not yet. I'm just, I might be kind of easing my way back into there. It's just, uh, I was out and about the last two days and I happened to uh, come upon the uh, an ideal shot or an opportunity for a quick funny cold open that I thought I would insert into the video. And I have been missing my... Uh, intro music with the album art flyby, so I thought I'd put it in this video and see what you think. And But anyway, uh, yes, according, as you can see by the title of the video, uh, and by the way, I am still kind of doing this in my webcam style with any little mess-ups with my talking and stuff and funny awkward pauses, pauses those are still going to be in the video. It's not going to be a crisply, cleanly edited video unless I happen to be in the mood for it uh, when I do my editing stage. But anyway, uh, yes, as you saw in the title of this video, uh, I went on, for the last two days, I went on a uh, little thrift store crawl around the Eugene Springfield area. I hit all six of the St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores. I've been wanting to do that for a while, ever since I went to my first SVDP thrift store back last June or July of last year. So it's been all, uh, it's been a year since I've uh, been there, and I found a really uh, surprisingly good haul at that point, and ever since then, I've been wanting to visit the other five stores. So I had a couple of days off from work, so I decided to go ahead and do that, and I came home with a pretty darn good haul. Um, as, as as you can see in the... I vlogged a little bit, so as you can see in the footage, the uh, sizes of the CD selections at the stores ranged from, you know, two columns about chest height, uh, Though that small of a, of a uh, selection, all the way up to, oh, a, a few hundred, three or four hundred CDs uh, look like uh, in some of the uh, more well-equipped stores. So yes, a variety of selections, a variety of merchandise, and since it's a thrift store that sells used stuff that they just get in from donations, the stock's going to change regularly, so I'm going to probably do this every couple of months, maybe more frequently than that. I don't know if I'm going to end up vlogging or, or, you know, doing a video each time with my thrift, salt, thrift haul. It depends on what I find, obviously. So, But yes, I came home with three records, four cassettes, and a few dozen CDs. And I'm going to show you all that stuff. And uh, my CD rack is sitting here in my lap. I think maybe before I do that, though, I will go through the cassettes and records that I found real quick. Uh, yes, yeah, the cassettes were 49 cents a piece, so yay. Why not? And uh, first one I got is... Cargo by Men at Work. Uh, yes, this is one that I had back when this album first came out. Cassette is the form I had it on, so uh, I've kind of, kind of come full circle. I had the cassette at first. I never owned the record back in the old days. Uh, I eventually bought it on CD, and then, of course, when the remastered editions came out in 2010, I think it was? Maybe it was earlier than that. I picked up the 
uh, Business As Usual, Usual and Cargo Remasters. They didn't do a remaster for their third album. Uh, pick those up. But then I've recently picked up all three of Men at Work's albums on vinyl. So, and finally, after all these years and years and years, I actually got rid of the CDs. So, and now, of course, having found, I actually have Business As Usual on cassette. I got that a, couple, a few months ago. And now Cargo. So yes, in a way, in the terms of format, I've kind of come full circle back to cassettes. And uh, I'll explain my relationship with cassettes at some point. I, I kind of did in a video last year. But uh, to put it very briefly, um, cassettes are a format... I mean, I obviously take them seriously enough that I had a rack custom built for me by my friend Skip that I house my cassettes in, and I've got a couple hundred. But... I don't take it so seriously that cassette is the f main format that I buy an album on. An album that I really, really like and love and enjoy. So, in that respect, I do yet don't take cassette seriously as a format. So, yeah. If you have any questions about that that aren't answered in that old video, drop me a comment, a question in the comments. Uh, next one I picked up is... Doris Day, Sentimental Journey, a classic album by Doris Day. You guys know if you've watched enough videos of mine, you know how much I love Doris Day. And of course this has the title track on it. And uh, I'm beginning to see the light. Uh, I had the craziest dream. And at last, she does, I, I assume that's a cover of the song that Etta James made famous. So, yeah. And now this one, uh, you it's going to be hard for you to tell what album it is by the cover because it looks like it's been very heavily sun bleached, but it is um, double, vis yeah, double Vision by Foreigner. So yeah, I pick, decided to go ahead and pick it up for 49 cents. Hot Blooded and the title track Double Vision. Uh, excellent album. Not a huge Foreigner fan, but I, I like a fair number of their uh, hit singles. And then Donny Osmond. This is his self-titled album from 1991. No, 1989. And uh, I loved his album from, was it last year? Uh, Start Again, I think is the name of it. Uh, loved that one, and so I decided, to, uh, especially, as I said, for 49 cents, pick one up of his old classics. This one has that uh, single that he was relatively famous in terms of in terms of Donny Osmond singles, Soldier of Love. Rather corny title, but hey, what can you do? And anyway, a uh, few records I picked up. This this is kind of a mixed mixed bag, you know. You you might appreciate some of them, you might not. Uh, first one, uh, Barbara Streisand's second album. I have her first album on vinyl. I actually picked that up at, at a thrift store, also a little independent thrift store that's actually just a short uh, walk away from the House of Records. So decided to pick up her second album. And then check this one out. Yes. A classic, classic Ray Charles album, Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music. And uh, this one, the condition is, um, I have not cleaned these records yet, but the there are a couple of scratches on this one. It doesn't look like they're deep enough to make the record skip or make it un unplayable otherwise. And there is a spot on uh, one side of the record. I'm not sure if it's damage that will make the record unplayable. Uh, it kind of looks and feels just like dried gunk that I can clean off with a little uh, elbow grease and my uh, record cleaning fluid. So we'll see if that happens. But hey, for two ninety nine is what the records cost at the at the St. Vinny's thrift stores, which I thought was a little bit pushing it for thrift store record prices. But I guess they've caught on to the fact that vinyl is trending again. So what are you going to do? And the money, you know, the money that they make goes to a good cause. It goes to support the community. So that's the good thing about buying at thrift stores. Well, aside from saving a load of money, uh, is, is the money kind of recirculates into the beneficial programs that they provide, usually. Uh, and then this uh, last record that I bought at a St. Vinny's store was Andy Gibb. Yes, kitschy 70s stuff. Uh, this is his album, Shadow Dancing. And I might not have picked this one up. Uh, but then, of course, you know, I, I like his uh, a couple of his uh, old uh, hits. The title track, Shadow Dancing, and Your Love, Don't Throw It All Away. Who am I kidding? I probably would have gone ahead and picked this up regardless. But also, uh, because I saw at House of Records last week, but I didn't pick it up at the time, 
his other album, uh, Flowing Rivers, which has his other big hit, I Just Want to Be Your Everything, on it. And so I went ahead and picked up Shadow Dancing, hoping that this one was still available at House of Records, and I had time to stop there yesterday, and it was. Yay. So I've got the two Andy Gibb albums that I really care about. So, uh, so I'm happy in that respect. Um, and then, yes, I... I used to have a long time ago, but I haven't had it for a while, an Andy Gibb compilation on CD. But now that I have all the songs of his that I care about, I don't on uh, LP, I don't need the CD anymore. So, yay. Anyway, yes, uh, so now I decided I'd go into and show you the three dozen CDs that I picked up uh, at the various thrift stores. Now, we donate, uh, you know, the CDs like the bargain bag cast-offs and whatnot that I don't want anymore and the ones that I can't sell to the record stores in the area, I we always donate to St. Vincent de Paul. So uh, it's no surprise that I did see, over the course of the day, uh, at the two days actually, I split the my crawl up into two days, uh, several CDs that I had um, donated at one, one point or, an, or another. Uh, many of them, though, are not there, and I would rather imagine, judging by the condition of the vast majority of the CDs that St. Vincent de Paul sells, uh, if a CD has enough scratches, blemishes on it, they're not going to sell it. They're going to get rid of it in whatever way they get rid of it and not bother to sell it in their stores. So quite a few of the stuff, of the things that I had donated over the years, I didn't see there. And I can't imagine it's stuff that anybody would have wanted to pay money, pay money for. So, but anyway, but yes, I did find a couple of them that I had donated over the years. Now, I don't know if this first... These first two CDs are the actual ones that I donated, or if they just happen to be the same albums that somebody else donated, but Daniel Bedingfield, uh, Gotta Get Through This, and his follow-up album, uh, Second First Impression. Yes, I had gotten rid of these a while ago, uh, just because I'd gotten tired of them, but when I saw them there, I thought, oh, I'll give them one more chance. Uh, yes, it's it's the, the vicious cycle that I tend to go through with... Uh, uh, I get rid of albums, and then I end up buying them again. So, uh, Case in point, and I actually just talked about these guys in my last CD collection video, a boy band called Five. Now, yes, I have their debut album, but I have the Australian version, and there's a specific reason why I bought uh, This is the American release. Uh, several of their singles were mixed differently for the U.S. market than for the rest of the world. So this CD, they're not listed as alternate mixes on the uh, track listing, but they are, in fact, different mixes than were on the worldwide, uh, outside of the U.S. releases of their al of their debut album. So that's the reason I picked this one up. So there you go. Now this one is, uh, I decided, this was also actually in my last uh, CD collection video. I was going through my Melissa Etheridge CDs and realizing that I, kind of don't have much of an attachment to them to them anymore and uh, this kind of clinched it when I found still sealed brand new still sealed Melissa Etheridge's greatest hits the road less traveled uh, so yes her singles are really the only songs that I truly am attached to so I decided to this is the latest artist in uh, an example lately of several artists that uh, I've ditched their studio albums in favor of a greatest hits collection so Go figure, huh? And a couple of uh, a couple other greatest hits that I happen to pick up. Uh, Bob Seger and the Silver Bullet Band. Of course, they have... Uh, let's see, what's... Uh, what are their... Oh, Old Time Rock and Roll. And wasn't there another... Oh, Like a Rock. And a couple other good songs that they did over the years. So, decided to give their greatest hits a try. I have only am familiar with those couple of songs of theirs. And now, this next one... I have tried several times to get into KISS. And uh, this is actually not the first time I've bought this Greatest Hits collection of theirs. I've I've tried a couple of times. Actually, I bought this one, and I also, also bought a different Greatest Hits. I think it was the Icon, uh, their, their installment in the Icon uh, Hits series. And, yeah, KISS is an artist that I'm probably going to do a video on this at some point, but... Uh, artists that I have never been able to get into that a lot of other people just love to pieces. Uh, and Kiss is one of those guys. I will, uh, one of those artists. I'll talk about it. I'll talk about why 
as we go on later on, I don't want to make this, uh, or in a future video, I don't want to make this video too terribly long. Uh, and uh, so yeah, on to other stuff that I found. Pretty interesting stuff here. Lou Rawls. Uh, this is a uh, the best of Lou Rawls, the Capital Jazz and Blues Sessions. So yes, Lou Rawls is, was mainly an R&B and soul singer, but he went, he dipped his toes into the jazz and uh, blues field for a while. And so this just looked interesting, and I thought I'd pick it up. And as a bonus Easter egg, it looks like it has a Skips, an old Skips price tag on it. So, uh, you would think, I mean, it would stand to reason that uh, for as long as Skips was around, their CDs uh, that people had bought but couldn't sell back to the store since it's not there anymore would eventually end up in St. Vinny's. And then uh, another jazz uh, CD I picked up, the George Benson Cookbook. This is his third album I picked up, and I think this was at Skips, maybe it wasn't, uh, his sophomore album, which escapes me, the name of it escapes me at the moment, but I figured, hey, uh, I, I will never shirk uh, the opportunity to listen to a George Benson album. He's fantastic. Not only his 80s pop singing era, but also his, his classic instrumental guitar era. A wickedly talented guitar player and a pretty darn decent singer, too. And then uh, you have heard me mention this uh, artist once or twice recently, Diane Shore. I picked up uh, her album Music Is My Life, uh, partly because the, of the title. I mean, hey, it's got a bunch of, uh, looks like a lot of uh, great uh, American songbook standards. Uh, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered, and uh, Good Morning Heartache, I Only Have Eyes For You. So this is going to be an interesting one to uh, listen to, and she's uh, another very talented uh, vocalist. And then uh, this other one was from a, uh, well, not the CD, but the artist was in a recent bargain bag, Susie Bogus, and uh, she, she's actually partnered up with Chet Atkins, the guitar virtuoso, for this album, and so I thought I would definitely, uh, with the good first impression that Susie Bogus left me with that album that uh, was in my bargain bag, and of course with Chet Atkins, how could I not pick this one up? And uh, up here next is another CD that I used to have a while ago. Got rid of, uh, but I decided to pick it up again. The soundtrack from the movie Threesome. It is a Josh Charles and Stephen Baldwin and uh, Laura Flynn Boyle movie from the 90s. And it has songs by Tears for Fears, General Public, uh, New Order, Duran Duran, uh, and U2. Did I mention U2? I can't remember. But, uh, so yeah, uh, an excellent soundtrack. An interesting movie. Very funny movie. Uh, so yeah, if, if you happen to uh, happen across it sometime, give it a watch. It, it'll, it'll be yeah, a little bit racy, but a uh, fun movie. And uh, I found a handful of CDs that were still sealed, as you saw a couple minutes ago. One of them was uh, Lady Antebellum, I Need You Now. Been wanting to try this one out for a while, and... There's one in the dollar section at House of Records, but it's got a, a handful of scratches on it, so I didn't want to bother picking it up. But hey, for the same price, a brand new still sealed one, what's not to like? And uh, now we're getting into a couple of artists that uh, I've, I've known about but have never tried out and I've kind of wanted to try out. Uh, one of them is X Ambassadors, their album Orion, the Target Deluxe Edition, or the Target Exclusive Edition, still sealed. Why not? And remember, these were all a buck a piece. How can I refuse some of these bargains? And here we have a, I believe this guy was an X Factor winner in the UK, Joe McEldery. I decided to give his debut album a try. And then we're coming up on a couple of American Idol uh, alumni. Uh, one, one particular regular viewer of mine will be happy to uh, see American Idols get a mention. Ruben Studdard. Yes, I had never had his debut album before, and this is actually one with a couple of bonus tracks, so I don't know if this was a Target ex exclusive, or perhaps a Walmart exclusive, or whatever, but, uh, yeah. Or if it was a re-release, a deluxe edi edition re-release, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, decided to give him a try. A couple of blemishes on that one, but it was not in bad condition at all. Then we have a finalist from the season after that, season three, I believe, LaToya London. She always, 
I, I've seen clips of her singing, and she's got a beautiful voice. And so I decided to go ahead and give her album a try. This is her debut album, uh, Love and Life. And I believe the runner-up of the same season, Diana DeGarmo. Give her album a try, too. And it has Blue Skies in it. It has Don't Cry Out Loud and Dream, 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 which I believe is the... Uh, oh, no, that's that's not the Ever and Weather song. Unless it is, under just under a different title. I don't know. But I look forward to listening to it. And then we have a few albums that I, uh, by artists I'd never heard of before. I decided to go ahead and take a chance on them. Uh, the first one, because of the hype sticker, and pardon the uh, plastic. This is still sealed in its cellophane, but the cellophane is very dirty. Uh, Marcus Miller. And I don't know if this is his debut album or not, but as you can see by the hype sticker, Corinne Bailey Ray, Keb Mo guest stars on this. So that right there sold me on the CD. It was a guest appearance by, by Keb Mo. So I cannot wait to try this one out. And this obviously has been uh, still sealed for a while, and I don't know if it was in the store for a while, because it's still got a Borders price tag on it. And Borders went out of business, what's it been, 15 years ago? Something like that? And then I have heard of Sam Cohen before, but I've never given him a try, so I thought I'd give this one a try too. And again, new and sealed. Uh, these next two were not sealed. These are older things, but uh, still, they sounded familiar, or sounded familiar, Sounded interesting to me, so I thought I'd give him a try. Uh, Stephen Kowalczyk, I guess is how you pronounce the name. Uh, this is his debut album, Moods and Grooves. And uh, from what I saw on Wikipedia, it's kind of like a jazz, uh, easy listening jazz kind of thing, which I am certainly up for listening to. So I decided to uh, check him out. And then uh, this next one is actually a according to Wikipedia, a new wave or pop rock band from Australia, Indecent Obsession. This is their um, their debut album. It went under a different title in Australia and I think other parts of the world, but in the U.S. it was released as their self-titled release. So, uh, And this is from 1993? 1989, excuse me. So, yeah. Pop rock, which uh, apparently apparently has some synths in it, a fair amount of synths. So I'm always up for that. My the, the 80s kid in me loves that. And I now I did stop at one Goodwill store, uh, amongst the uh, aside from the other six St. Vinny stores I stopped at, and I found a couple of CDs at the Goodwill store. One of them I had been looking for for quite a while, uh, Michael Penn's fourth album MP4. And uh, again, as a cute little uh, cool little Easter egg, it has. A Skips price tag on it, so it had been at Skips before. And then uh, this artist, I've got their debut album, and I, I liked it, and have been wanting to check them out a little bit more. And lo and behold, I found a compilation, a two-disc compilation of theirs at the Goodwill, Kitaro. Uh, he is a kind of a new age uh, instrumentalist. Uh, I, I believe he dabbles in electronica mostly. So yes, a two-disc set. So I'd go ahead and give that a go, and for $1.99, yeah, CDs are a little more expensive at the Goodwill most often, but uh, yeah, what the heck. And I found uh, f these next four are kind of weird and wonderful things, stuff I've that looked intriguing or that I've kind of wanted to try out, but um, didn't want to pay more than a throwaway sum of money for, in this case $1, uh, did the trick, so uh, give it a try. These first two, though, I had never heard of. Uh, the Moog Cookbook. Uh, and apparently that's the artist, because uh, that's all it says on the spine, and on the back it's just the song titles with no artists attributed to them. So, uh, But yes, this is a cover album. They do Moog synthesizer covers of Black Hole Sun, Buddy Holly, Basket Case, Come Out and Play, Free Fallen by uh, presumably the uh, Tom Petty song, Are You Gonna Go My Way, My Way, the Lenny Kravitz song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, even Flow, uh, The One I Love, which I'm not sure whose that is, and uh, Rocket in the Free World, another Tom Petty. Or no, that, that's Neil Young, sorry. So, obviously, to hear Moog synthesizer covers of those songs, I'm on board, especially for a dollar. And then we have, uh, I'm not sure if it's Hoja or if it's pronounced in the Spanish Hoja, but uh, the album is called The Gong Show. And this is a cappella stuff, and this this also is a covers album. 
Stayin' Alive, uh, Cecilia, the uh, Paul Simon song, Sweet Dreams, which I think is the uh, Eurythmics song, Brown Eyed Girl, Friends in Low Places, the Garth Brooks song, uh, 500 Miles, the uh, Proclaimers song, so, yeah. Oh, and I Can See Clearly, the uh, Bill Withers hit. So You can see why I'm just intrigued by some of these, and for a dollar, what's what do you got to lose? Speaking of what do you got to lose, Neo, Theod Neo Theater by AJR, Don't Judge Me. It was a dollar, okay? And I liked OK Orchestra enough that I wanted to give this a try. Hey, if it sucks, then I've lost one dollar, okay? Don't judge me. Life's too short to be a music snob, remember. And then, uh, I guess kind of falling in that same category of life's too short to be a music snob, Regis Philbin. And this is another one that I had seen in the dollar section, the, the dollar boxes at uh, House of Records, but again, kind of scratched up, so I didn't want to buy, buy it there for... Uh, you know, even though I paid the same price at St. Vinny's. But yes, he does a bunch of great American songbook singers, so why not give him a try? He may be a surprisingly good vocalist. I'm not sure, because I've never heard him sing before. And then I've got a couple of uh, easy listening uh, double albums here. First one is Neil Diamond, the movie album. He does songs from the movies, obviously, and uh, each disc only has ten songs on it, so I don't know why they didn't just make it a double length single disc, but hey, what the heck, for uh, for a dollar, why not? And uh, also, uh, still sealed, again, Barbara Streisand, and this is uh, What Matters Most. Saint Barbara Streisand sings the lyrics of Alan and Marilyn Bergman. So yes, great American songbook stuff. And this is, I guess, a deluxe version, and I think, um, any, any Target historians out there, uh, I think this is the old Target price tag. Because it has the, uh, this can be returned unopened jargon, which I think was on target price tags back in the day. Uh, but yes, the uh, the first disc is the actual, you know, the album, songs that were recorded specifically for this album. There's a second disc that has previously released songs with lyrics by uh, Alan and Marilyn Bergman. So, again, for a dollar, still sealed, uh, I'm there. And then I got three CDs by Gloria Estefan. I wanted to go ahead and beef up, beef up my Gloria Estefan discography. She is one of my favorite female pop vocalists ever. Uh, we've got um, Destiny, as well as Unwrapped, and Gloria. And this one, this one, I think, yeah, this one has bonus tracks, and I think it is the Unwrapped. Yes, the Unwrapped CD has a DVD with it. So, uh, a little more bang for my buck than I usually would have got. So, yeah. And then we've got uh, these other two also kind of fall in the uh, they were only a dollar, so what the heck category. Uh, Vanilla Ice, to the extreme. Uh, this is his uh, his big hit album. I did No, he did more than one album. But yes, this has Ice Ice Baby. And uh, play that funky music. He does a cover of the classic soul song. But uh, yes, I have never listened to more than one or two songs by Vanilla Ice. So I figured for one dollar, it's my chance to just check out an album of his. And then we have Alana Miles. Uh, the classic song Black Velvet, which was kind of a, uh, a country-ish ballad sort of thing. She sang Black Velvet, and it is on this album, her self-titled album. So I thought... Go ahead and uh, see. That's the only song of hers that I'm aware of that I have heard. So, and if this had been several years ago, I would never have bought the CD because uh, I worked at a casino in uh, Nevada. I lived in Nevada for two years. I worked at a casino for a couple of years, and there was live music there, and the bands that would play there, every band that played there would do Black Velvet. And so every... Every work shift, I probably heard that song three or four times. So yes, for a long time there, I was completely and totally sick of that song. But now that it's had time to rest and lay dormant for a while, give it a shot. And I'm saving, for the last two items, I'm saving two of the... Well, this first one is arguably a big score, but it's a very popular album. Uh, it is by Rod Stewart, uh, his album Vagabond Heart. 
This one has Rhythm of My Heart, as well as It Takes Two, a duet with Tina, Tina Turner, and perhaps my favorite Rod Stewart song, the Motown song. So get that. And But this one was kind of the, the score of the day. Uh, if, if you don't count the um, Michael Penn CD, because that one, that's basically the only one out of all of them that I got that was on my list, was the Michael Penn song. But this one is a pretty darn good score, especially for $1.00. Bob Dylan, Highway 61 Revisited. Uh, and no, I had never had this album before. As I explained before, it's been it's taken me forever to start to appreciate Bob Dylan. So I decided to give this one a try. It is it of course has my favorite Dylan song, Like a Rolling Stone, on it. So easing myself into uh Bob Dylan albums, uh studio albums. So yeah. That was uh I mean just that for one dollar. Uh, that kind of made the trip worthwhile. But uh, yes, six St. Vinny stores along with a Goodwill. And of course, I made a stop at Barnes & Noble and picked up a couple of CDs. Maybe I'll show those uh, in future videos, but I didn't want to make this video excruciatingly long. It's already uh, half an hour long, so I'll go ahead and cut it at this point. Uh, I thought uh, you would really appreciate seeing my uh, thrift store finds from my uh, my summer 2021 thrift store crawl. I happen. I'm. Uh, I'm going to be doing this uh, at least three or four times a year, possibly even uh, more frequently than that. But uh, anyway, yes, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please remember to subscribe and like my channel and like this video, and uh, go check out my past videos and check out my fellow YouTubers who are all worth watching. They're all listed down in my uh, description field. And uh, leave any comments, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video again. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.